All right, Lilu, you ready to review Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? Wait a minute. Are you wearing an Indiana Jones hat? Well, this is awkward. One of us will have to change. All right, we'll compromise. I will be cool, young Indiana Jones, and you can be old, grumpy Indy. I get a whip, and you can shake your paw at those hippie teenagers to turn down your loud music. Sound good? Oh, yeah, Lilu. <laughs> Buckle up, let's talk Indiana Jones and the Dial of Density. I'm your density. Your destiny. I, I mean, destiny. Let me start off by saying Indiana Jones is undoubtedly my favorite character in film. I grew up idolizing the original trilogy, which played a significant role in shaping the film-loving nerd I am today. I mean, look at this adorable photo of me. It belongs in a museum. Oh, trust me, Lilu. I couldn't keep the ladies away. Don't you give me that look. I would like to have a moment of silence for this little nerd's love life. When Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was released, I was beyond excited. Almost as excited as Lilu in a new Indiana Jones hat. You love wearing hats, don't you, Lilu? Hmm. Something about that look tells me not so much. Lilu, bark twice if you need help. Hmm, I guess she's fine. I confess that I've been a Crystal Skull apologist over the years, as I didn't hate on it as much as most people did. Let's just say I have been in denial since that film's release. I mean, the monkey scene in that film wasn't that bad, was it? Sure, the film had its fair share of issues, and maybe Indy would have been better off riding into the sunset with The Last Crusade. I mean, it's called The Last Crusade. But Crystal Skull did happen, and sadly, it left a bittersweet and unfulfilled impression on Indy's legacy. When I heard that director James Mangold was taking over for Spielberg and bringing us one last adventure, I was cautiously hopeful. Spielberg is the GOAT, but I think Crystal Skull showed that Spielberg's heart wasn't fully in it for more adventures. So perhaps a fresh take on this beloved character was needed. Counting down the days to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has been absolutely nerve wracking for me. You know, I tried to stay clear of critical reviews before forming my own opinion, but I couldn't help but hear early critics' dissatisfaction with the new film, which scared me. Say it isn't so! Well, I am beyond relieved to say they were wrong. They were wrong. My opinion is the only one that matters. Right, Lilu? Right. Right. Why aren't you saying anything? Your silence speaks volumes. Because I'm certainly never wrong. I can say without any hesitation or biased fan denial that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is a proper Indiana Jones adventure. We are at a point where the inspiration for Indiana Jones film isn't the love of 30s pulp like Weird Tells that captivated Spielberg and George Lucas, but instead throwbacks to the Indiana Jones films themselves. And James Mangold and his crew have done their homework. It is apparent that Mangold loves this character and lovingly honors Indiana Jones with a fitting conclusion to his legacy. Gone is the horrible, bright, and washed out cinematography from Crystal Skull. Instead, getting back to the grittier tone of the first films. As much as I love what James Mangold has done here, I will say that it is missing Spielberg's clever camera tricks and famous Spielberg wonders, along with his innate vision for action sequences. I'm not saying that the action sequences aren't good in this film, but all of it has a bit more of a, a typical modern cinematic look and approach to action sequences. The Spielberg touch may be missing, but fear not my fellow Indian enthusiasts, this film still feels very much like an Indiana Jones adventure. I will say though, 
it's cool James Mangle does actually make more use of Indiana Jones's whip this time around. Whip it good! Whoosh. The Dial of Destiny is also excellently paced, opening with one of the most exciting action sequences in the franchise in which we get to see a young Dr. Jones taking on his old adversaries, Nazis. Indy feels right at home once again, punching and killing Nazis just like the good old days. I've seen a few criticisms about the CGI of the younger Indy in the sequence. We do know that Harrison Ford is 80 years old now, yes? CGI is still improving and isn't perfected. All I could say about this scene is, wow. I thought young Indy looked incredible. Sure, saw some issues here and there, but overall, I don't think I've seen this done better. It is amazing to me that I was watching young Indiana Jones come to life again. Between this and seeing Michael Keaton play Batman once more, has little me just flipping out? I'm losing my freaking nerd brain. Harrison Ford genuinely loves Indiana Jones and wanted a fitting farewell to this character that he has embodied for so long. It is apparent that Ford is putting everything into this last performance and reaches emotional depths we haven't seen from this character. Another thing I appreciated is something you rarely, if ever, see in action-adventure films. Indy takes pause a few moments in the film to have a genuine emotional reaction to minor characters being collateral damage to the bad guys. It's a small thing to note, but I just thought it was a nice touch. If anything, it is even more impressive to see the things 80-year-old Indiana Jones can still do. I mean, Lilu is young and energetic and she can barely stay awake for a movie review. Me personally, I have my own plans to stay young. Why am I still so old? It chose poorly. I don't think there is anything wrong with Indy commenting on age. It's a part of life. Some people just hate to see change from characters they knew as a child. Take the strong backlash from an aging and jaded Luke Skywalker, for example. I mean, after a lifetime of trying to stop the Empire and seeing them rise again and again, I think it's only fitting his character might be just a tad disillusioned. Anyways, back to the Harrison at hand. With an older Indy, I think it is only fitting that the plot revolves around time. Indy has always been a character fascinated with history and the past. Now that he is older, he is captive to his own history. The Indy character even says his adventures are behind him. This is a character at the moment that would prefer to live in the past instead of embrace the present which is an effective plot device at this point in Indy's timeline and an even more satisfying conclusion to Indiana Jones' story. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is also a wonderful new character in the Indiana Jones universe. James Mangold strikes a perfect balance for her character, allowing her to be strong and interesting, but not overshadowing Indiana Jones himself. It was also fun to see some other familiar faces from Indy's past pop up as well but I won't be giving anything away. Of course, it wouldn't be an Indiana Jones film without the legendary John Williams. His score immediately transports us into Indy's world, setting the emotional tone with his brilliant compositions. It's a testament to the power of his scores, evoking nostalgia and capturing the essence of this beloved franchise. Nothing can truly recapture the magic of experiencing these films as a child, as it is time itself that gives these films the nostalgia that seems untouchable today. I think Dial of Destiny is a worthy addition to the franchise and is a satisfying, fitting conclusion to a character I love so much. So very happy to say this film is an easy green light. Even if this film only ends up being a tribute band, it is still playing my favorite song. Lilu, wear that hat proudly. Wear it proudly. Snake! Why did it have to be? Holy shit! You're right, Lilu. I am the old indie.